My name is Kat Albrecht. I'm with Missing Pet Partnership and I'm going to be doing a, a training demonstration here on the use of Blue Star Forensics, uh, which is a form of Luminol. Um, Luminol is a great tool to have in your kit of pet detective tools. Um, if you're taking our Missing Animal Response uh, pet detective training course, then you know how uh, this can be utilized when on an investigation, such as you come across uh, several tufts of fur. Uh, it has the appearance that perhaps uh, an animal could have been killed, but you're not positive because say it's a grassy area and you can't see if there's any blood there. Uh, luminol is used to detect the presence of blood. So for example, I've had a case where we went out, we found the tufts of fur, but the owner wasn't convinced that their animal, their, their cat was killed. And uh, we came back out when it turned dark, sprayed luminol in the area where we found the tufts of fur and it uh, luminesces blue wherever there's blood. And uh, there it luminesced a big puddle that there, was, that there was blood. You could not see it with the naked eye because on the, the grass it had washed away, but the, um, the changes the chemical composition, the iron uh, in the blood was still there and detected by the luminol. So what I'm going to do is show you the process of how to mix the luminol. Uh, later on a separate video, we'll show you uh, going out where we actually spray the luminol, uh, where it's dark and we have some blood that's, that's been spread on the ground. Um, I'm going to read from the, the training information here. Blue Star is a form of luminol uh, used to detect latent blood stains. Um, it is three times brighter than traditional luminol. It's luminescent longer and is visible to the naked eye in semi-darkness. Once the blood stain has been located, the area can be sprayed again and again for further observation. Blue Star does not adversely affect DNA. Therefore, after a stain has been located, samples can be collected for further analysis. Um, when Blue Star is mixed with the catalyst and there's a tablet, of hydrogen peroxide which is included in the foil pouch. So when you purchase the Blue Star, and we will have that, that information is in uh, your training course in your training manual for Missing Pet Partnership. Um, when you purchase it and, and the box comes to you, this is pretty much how we carry it in our evidence kit at Missing Pet Partnership. But it has two different tablets. Again, one of them is a hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide tablet, and the other one is actually the, uh, the, the luminol. Um, when you mix them, and we'll be doing that with some distilled water, um, and then put them, uh, and then they come in the spray, you spray it on the, the blood, and it comes in the contact of the nucleus of a blood hemoglobin. Uh, it oxidizes and emits an intense blue chemiluminescence that is visible in the dark. This product will not be visible in total sunlight, so you have to come back when it's dark in order uh, to utilize the luminol. We've uh, tried to, to do our training demonstration before when it was just starting to get dark, and then we've, we had tested it one time when there were street lamps there, and it, it's just not as visible as when it can be pitch dark. So it's best used during no light or low light conditions. This might mean you need to return to the scene of a suspected predation kill in order to process the area for potential blood stains. Uh, false positive may result from the use of certain household detergents, chlorine, some paints, varnishes, copper, iron met metaboli metabolizing plants such as lichens, thy thyme, and some tree mosses in certain soils containing iron. When we did a um, canine pet detective boot camp back in 2005 and we were testing aluminol, we were spraying it on the ground, there was a lot of iron in the ground and when we would spray it you'd see these little sparkles of blue come up because it was not that there were sparkles or drops of blood, it was actually the iron in the soil that was reacting with aluminol. Blue Star will not destroy DNA, however, uh, the training formula, which we actually use here at Missing Pet Partnership for training purposes. This one here says criminal investigation, so this is not the training version, this is the actual um, more expensive uh, version of it. Um, but if you, uh, for some reason, had bought the training version, that will destroy DNA. Um, Blue Star is... Um, Best results are obtained when Blue Star is used within three hours after mixing. So you really need to mix it and then utilize it. Do not attempt to store or reuse the product after mixing or after three hours. 
the mixed product will oxidize and the inert gases will build pressure causing leakage. Uh, so it's not a wise thing to do. Okay, so here are the steps to mixing the luminol. Now in my um, evidence kit, among many things that we carry in here, in fact, I could probably show a few of them. We carry a, a box of, of gloves in here, carry our luminol. We actually have a tray that has many other items in it. Many of the DNA collection kits, which we will cover in a separate video. Um, we also carry an illuminating magnifier, which is a magnifying glass with a light built in it for you to be able to look at and examine hair fibers. Other magnifying glasses, the typical pet detective uh, uh, profile. Okay, what I'm looking for is a half cup. I forgot to pull out ahead of time. All right. And a good book on animal tracks, on scat, because as a pet detective, you're going to look at a lot of animal poop, right? Animal poop and tracks. So if people didn't think you were nuts before now, now they really will. All right. So to mix the luminol, you're going to tear open the foil pouches and prepare to put them in your spray bottle. Okay, having a um, second person to open those would be good. All right, so you open one end of the pouch to drop in the first tablet. Maybe you won't do this with rubber gloves. Um, some of the cases that we've used the luminol on, have the people have followed up by doing a DNA test. Um, one case in particular was a case of uh, one of our tracking dogs tracked down and found um, the remains, actually um, the intestines, uh, that a veterinarian, we took, then took the intestines into a veterinarian and they confirmed that it was, um, <laughs> they confirmed that it was a, uh, the intestines of a, okay, don't recommend that you use your teeth, but <laughs> for the purposes of getting this video over with, I'm using my teeth. Uh, they confirmed that the intestines were that of a, um, of, from conduce, uh, uh, the intestines belonged to a dog. And so um, the owner then um, had the uh, sample of the, um, the intestines and uh, matching DNA from their dog at home sent off to a genetics lab uh, at UC Davis and it uh, was confirmed with it came back to an identical match that it was from the missing dog. So that, that was a case closed. That was actually by the use of a DNA test. Uh, another case, the, again, I mentioned this one in the webinar, was a case of a cat that um, the owner wasn't convinced that the cat had been killed. But when we went back, um, it, and even though there was many tufts of fur there, we went back, sprayed the luminol. It luminesced a big puddle. Um, that you could see. You couldn't see with the naked eye, but there was a big blue spot and we knew her, their cat had been killed. All right, so step one, tear open the foil pouches. One contains a white tablet and the other contains a beige tablet. Number two, drop both tablets in a spray bottle containing one, uh, one half cup right here of distilled water, which is that. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the distilled water in with the two tablets. All right. Allow the tablets to dissolve for two to five minutes, mixing the chemicals by stirring gently with a circular motion of your hand. Do not shake the container or turn it upside down, so you're not going to want to do you know, vigorous shaking. Once the tablets are completely dissolved, Blue Star is ready to use. When you go to spray it, which we will demonstrate on a, a different video, uh, spray a fine vapor mist over the area, so you just begin spraying in a mist uh, with a mist where you suspect that there could be blood. 
uh, tufts of fur found in the area, a stain in the roadway. If the area contains blood, it will immediately emit a, a, a intense blue color. So we, again, we hope that we'll be able to demonstrate this at, um, with another video. But this is Seattle, so if it's pouring rain outside, I, I'm not sure that we'll be creating that video or not. That's why we're inside right now doing this training. Um, the blue color will be bright initially, but then it will begin to fade. So simply all you have to do to reactivate it is spray more of the, the luminol on it and it will intensify. If you've used or disposed of the unused blue star, thoroughly wash and rinse the spray bottle. Uh, if you use this indoors, close all windows, block all outside light sources and turn off the lights. Uh, outdoor use, wait for the nighttime and turn off all area lights in an urban setting. If necessary, screen off distant light sources. Again, the most critical thing is getting it dark. Um, warning, do not spray the bottle towards another person. Do not spray into the wind uh, because you might come into contact with human blood. Wear protective gloves. We're mainly dealing with animal blood, but you still want to wear protective clothing or protective gloves. Um, and probably a good idea to be wearing um, eye protection as well. Dispose of unused Blue Star in a sink you, under running water. Dispose of blood tainted products in accordance with local, state, and federal regulations with, uh, with, that apply to biohazards of human blood. Maybe not so much with animal blood, but it's a uh, good idea to treat it as if it would be a biohazard and uh, dispose of it properly. Um, so I'm going to be concluding um, this portion of of the luminol training because this is just showing you how to mix and prepare the luminol. The next video would then be us actually spraying and using the luminol when it gets dark. This still has more uh, that needs to dissolve. But what I kind of chuckled at a few moments ago as I was um, being frustrated and trying to open the pouch was as I was opening the pouch I'm looking at this wall in front of me and guess what's on here? Blood. I mean how appropriate and how interesting. This is how um, as a detective, as a pet detective, if you can move the camera over here, you want to start paying attention to um, and looking for things. You'll be amazed at the things that you can find. So as I'm, we just happen to have set up here, but what I'm seeing here is that likely somebody uh, cut themselves because I'm seeing drips here and here. And this here would be a blood spatter right here, the fact that it's moving downward like that. And so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to use some of our other testing tools to test a couple of these stains to see if this is in fact human blood. I suspect it would be human blood. I can't believe that there would be an animal that would have been in here that would have gotten injured. It may not be blood at all. It could be that these are, um, you know, some other chemical or something that spilled. It's, they're dark, they almost look black, but blood doesn't, blood is not going to, that's the other point, blood is not going to be uh, bright red. Uh, when you're going to when it's on grass initially when it's on grass it may be but when it's on dirt it's it's going to look it's uh, on pavement um, it's not going to look like blood so I'm just excited that I'm now actually actually have some blood to test with so we're going to end this video on um, on luminol and we'll be watching another video where I use both hemodent and hexagon on blood.